Hello, Next Up Social family. Welcome to another live discussion here on the Next Up Social channel. As always, I am Richelle Wright Wilson, and I'm joined by Juwan Buford. And today, we're excited to introduce Jamie Gabriel. So, before we jump into learning more and chatting with Jamie and learning about her background. As always, if you're watching with us here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button below so you never miss an interview, um, any of our lives or any of the incredible discussions here we have in Next App Social. So homework, <laughs> that, that's done. Let's get into it, right? Uh, welcome, Jamie. Thank you again for joining us here today. We are very excited to have you talk about your and talk about your journey today. So let's jump into it. Tell us more about yourself, your background. Um, and because we are about entrepreneurship, what led you into the journey of entrepreneurship as well? Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, this is uh, such an exciting time to talk about entrepreneurship and a little bit of who I am. So I'm a multipreneur. I am a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm an auntie. I'm a site manager. Um, and I'm a person who makes something out of nothing as my family coins that, that phrase for me. Um, what led me to entrepreneurship was watching my parents. Um, growing up, they had a limousine service and uh, one of my first jobs was cleaning out the limousines and washing the limousines. And if you know what a party in a limousine looks like, um, if you haven't seen one, I can tell you, you don't really want to see one, uh, not from the standpoint from cleaning it, but that helped to build my um, desire to, to have my own, right? Um, to know that it's possible um, to understand the importance of having ownership and being an entrepreneur in the things that you wanna do in life. So um, I didn't really fully become an entrepreneur until one day my sister, who's a baker, she's an entrepreneur, said that she had a client who wanted something unique. And um, she sent me a photo. I went to recreate it. I did some research and found that the person who created this awesome centerpiece had a um, patent pending on the item that they wanted. Mm. So what I did was took the picture and created something different, but um, was similar to what they wanted. Uh, that I did not get the job um, for that person, but it did springboard me into starting my own event planning company. And um, what I found is that the event planning company has been the catalyst for all the other businesses that I have endeavored into, um, which has been truly amazing. And the journey um, really springboarded in 2020 during the pandemic. So um, I hope that answered the, the yeah. question. <laughs> I love it. Um, so this is unique. And now it's, it definitely informs me, helps me better understand how you move with your family now. Because one of the reasons why I was so excited to bring you on and invite you to be our guest was that there is a project or something that you do on a consistent basis with your family that you've been doing for quite some time now. And I was so impressed by it. You know, individuals talk about legacy and financial independence and building family and generational wealth, but very few people execute, right? Very few people take the action steps. And I had an opportunity to participate in one of these get togethers that you have for your family. And it just blew me away. Talk to me a little bit. How did this process get started? Like, let the audience know what am I referring to and what inspired you to do this? Okay, so uh, years ago when my son was growing up, um, so my son and my nephew lived uh, in the house with us. And we would have these family late in the midnight hour powwows. And we said one day we were going to build all these different businesses and do all these different things. Well, they started growing up, they became adults, and then they were kind of doing their own thing. During the pandemic, they reached out to me and said, we need to do something because we feel disconnected. And first it started out with us just, um, just talking about the social um, atrocities of the day and how we were feeling emotionally and um, 
different standpoints. I worked through the whole pandemic where um, the majority of my family did not. Um, so I was still having that social interaction. So we decided to start having family meetings. So the first two meetings, we were allowed to just get out everything, um, all emotions, all frustrations, those type of things. We said, okay, we're going to get those out of the way. And by the third meeting, I said, what are we going to do about it? It is time. We have talked about for years that we wanted to be entrepreneurs. Each one of you said to me that you had a dream, you had a goal. Let's do it. Um, I had just pretty much wrapped up my master's um, in business administration. And I says, this is all the knowledge I've just gained. We need to utilize it. We're not going to just sit on this information. So we started having our meetings talking about entrepreneurship, where each person was in their uh, business endeavors. Do you have an LLC? Do you know what kind of business do you want? Have you given it a name? Do you have a brand? Um, let's not go backwards into this situation. Let's build the foundational pieces needed and mm -hmm. make sure that you are on a good um, platform. So then I met you, Mr. Buford, and I was like, this is an awesome opportunity to bring in an expert um, on making sure that your foundational pieces are in order. And brought you in, the information that you shared was absolutely amazing. Um, answered the questions I couldn't answer for them because they come to me as though I know everything. And I try to, but I was like, I, I don't have time to research all of this. Let me bring in an expert. And that is what you have to do when you get into what you call the commas. So when you get into the commas area, you need to have people on your team that specialize in those particular areas so that you can focus on the things that you do well within that business entity. So that is a uh, part of what we started doing. It has been um, instrumental in the growth of several businesses within our family. And uh, we don't get together as often because now they're all working <laughs> and working in those businesses, but uh, we are touching bases. So we will touch base in a couple of different apps just to give updates on where we're at. So we celebrate the wins when someone has earned enough money to establish their LLC. Uh, we um, celebrate the win when someone established enough money to get their prepaid legal in place, right? Um, all of those things we celebrate within this family unit as they are endeavoring into their new life of entrepreneurship. And this has been just so rewarding to see it happen in the uh, generations that are following me. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited just hearing it, right? Because I, <laughs> I mean, it's such an incredible story to, to hear about how you were able to model and experience entrepreneurship as a youth, right? Yes. Um, and that you've continued that legacy. Um, that's so exciting. And I know you're laying down seeds for future generations to come. Like this is going to become a habit, right? Yes. And it's, I mean, who knows? You look up uh, a couple more generations and maybe we're reading about you. You're <laughs> in, the, you know, in the magazine. So I love it. It's so, it's so incredible. Um, something else that caught my attention too is that you have a very demanding occupation, right? Your occupation requires a lot of bandwidth. <laughs> Um, and I know aside from it being psychologically and mentally taxing, it can also be physically taxing, right? Yes. And one of the questions we receive often is from aspiring entrepreneurs who have jobs, two, three, whatever's going on in their lives, academic, family responsibilities, et cetera, et cetera, is where do you find the energy? How do you do it? Like, how did you make this transition between W2 and then being an entrepreneur in your free time? What does that look like? Okay, so I can tell you is continue to be a stepped approach. Mm -hmm. I am very calculated in my entrepreneurship. I understand the importance of being an entrepreneur while being an entrepreneur. Yeah. So my strategic financial partner is my demanding, <laughs> physically taxing um, career that I currently have, but it funds all of my entrepreneur endeavors. And so I look at it as not how it's, I cannot not do it, right? It is my why, it is my purpose. It is um, the legacy that I am showing my children that as you 
continue to grow and evolve, that you don't have to be stagnant and that you can do multiple things at one time. Um, I do have to allocate my time wisely so that they don't trickle into each other and cause a, you know, a crashing effect. And in, in my entrepreneurship, it is actually my creative outlet. Mm -hmm. uh, what I found was um, the stressors of the regular day uh, does not always allow you to be creative. And mm -hmm. there's only so much creativity you can do when you work for a corporation. So what I do is I take that creative energy and I take it home and I create whatever it is I feel like I wanna create. Mm -hmm. um, one of those creations that came out of it was a journal, actually a couple of journals. And in that I initially started as an open, open book diary on Facebook. And these were just writings that I wanted to capture so that one day my children would have something to look back on so they could see my journey as I um, endeavored to be an entrepreneur while being an uh, entrepreneur inside of different corporations. And someone asked me, how can I get that? How can I get these writings? And I was like, I don't know, they're in my phone. I, I don't know. And uh, then it prompted me, I was like, if people are asking for this, that means that they're going through the same thing. So I guess I need to put this in some type of journal or something. I couldn't just put it inside of a book. I didn't think that that was relevant. I felt that when you read the quotes, it should invoke a next step, an action, mm -hmm. a goal, um, time to reflect. So uh, the, the, the brand is moment of reflections. So in moment of reflections, it gives you that opportunity to reflect on the quote and how it impacts your life. And then some of those quotes uh, are call to actions on what are you going to do next after you have consumed this information. That helped me to be more transparent, mm. to deal with things that I wasn't dealing with. And when I got the continued support of people like, I needed to hear that. Thank you so much for saying that. Oh, I didn't even think about it that way. Um, it, it birthed a new brand that I didn't even know um, that was to be. And uh, in that branding, I was able to employ my niece, who's mm -hmm. a graphic artist who created the logo for me. Um, then it helped me to um, partner with some other vendors, um, small businesses in the Metro Detroit area um, that make sense and print, they print t-shirts and labels and things like that. And I am all about supporting the small business, the underdog, right? Because we are all trying to get to that next level and I needed help somewhere. So I, I use, utilize those products inside my different endeavors. Um, so yeah, I just take that. I, I don't have a choice. Mm. is is the the thing when someone says well do you sleep my children say I don't sleep my family say there's no way she sleeps and I can tell you I enjoy my sleep um I have tea time at nine it has become more tea time at 10 but um I do have my tea time I relax I go to sleep and then I get up and I'm you you'll get me from 5 a.m to 9 p.m and I am going nonstop, mm. and that's why I think they think I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. When you were building this, you know, doing that journaling, doing that reflection that now led you to build a business around it, a brand around it. What, and, and, and people are reaching out to you and telling you that how it's impactful for them. Um, and with what you just said as well, that it's, it's, you're supporting those small businesses. What are some, um, of the things that you, you saw coming up a lot, even just for yourself or and then with other people um, reaching out to you as, as challenges when, when people are building something new, right? Uh, building these small businesses. What are, what are some of the consistent themes that you see in some uh, people who are building a brand, building a business that seem to be the roadblocks that they hit a lot? So, I believe one of the biggest things is self-doubt. Not knowing if people are going to accept your brand. 
-hmm. because you're an unknown. And so what will happen, and I experienced it myself, was how are my writings better than those that are on the bestseller list? Why would someone want to buy my writings? And I had to get out of my own way and say, people drove this. I didn't ask to make this journal. I wasn't even thinking about making a journal. Um, but I am also a person that I like to provide the full package. So if I'm going to give you something, because I love to give things, it has to be packaged properly. It has to be memorable and it has to be an experience. So when you take ownership of whatever it is that you create, it really doesn't matter what people say, as long as you trust in what you're doing. Be true to what you're doing and stay focused and somebody's going to want it. Somebody's going to be interested in it and someone's going to connect to it. So the biggest hurdle is to get out of your own way. Stop the self-doubt and just know that you were created to be amazing. And so in that amazingness, you can just do it and wherever it lands, it's okay. It may not land anywhere. It may land right on your dining room table where it started, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. You did something. You did something that you weren't sure that you were able to do and you've accomplished that thing. And that is part of what I teach my children so what if you fail? But what if you succeed? So if you, so you failed, what did you learn from that failure? Not to do it that way. Okay, don't cut the potatoes that direction because you'll cut yourself. Get that nice little potato peeling tool that they have out there and that'll stop you from cutting yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we don't even take the opportunity to look at the tools that we have in front of us mm -hmm. to use them in their proper application. Entrepreneurship is not taught in schools. It is something that is birthed inside of you. It is already part of your talents, abilities, and gifts that you were inundated with from the womb. Most times we are stopped um, when we're growing up because we start being conformed to specific learnings and teachings that stop us from being our creative selves. And then we have to take all this adulthood to then remember, oh, I like to do those things. And oh, I'm pretty darn good at that. And guess what? I just saw somebody else making money off of that thing I'm really good at. It's like, just do it. Yeah. Do it whether you fail or succeed. And when you succeed, so self, you know, celebrate that success. And then if you fail, say, is it worth um, revising? Did a couple people look at this and say that it was worth it? But most importantly, is it worth it to you? And that's, that's my, um, that's the biggest hurdle. Fantastic. You know, I'm listening to you and I hear a coach. <laughs> <laughs> I hear someone that, that leads leaders. That's what I'm hearing is I'm listening to you. And I know you're a writer. And so <laughs> that means you're drawing inspiration. You're drawing learning from somewhere, right? Yes. Where are some of these sources that you're pulling from? Where are some of these wells that you are drinking from to keep your creativity up, to give you the content and the knowledge you need to pass on to others, um, to fill your purpose? What are you reading? What are you listening to? Oh, that's uh, interesting. So I'm going to first say that my first inspiration is God by no stretch of the imagination. Um, my, re my writings are typically first thing in the morning when I wake up mm. and I'll hear either a title or a word or something. And then that sparks where I need to write about it. And so I'll write about it. Uh, but there are different books that I've read. Um, Do the Kind Thing was one of the books that uh, was very inspirational to me uh, from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Um, most recently, I've been reading, well, listening to an audio book called Talk Like Ted. And um, yeah, I see you smiling, Mr. Because <laughs> uh, you recommended it. Um, I can tell you, I didn't want to, at first I was like, hmm, this Talk Like Ted thing. But mm -hmm. before you prompted me to do that, I had wrote my own TED Talk. Mm. So oh. it was very interesting and I 
that dynamic um, because I said, I'm going to write this TED talk because I want to talk about how did I come to be on TED talk. And so I wrote it and then I sent it to my family. I was like, you guys got to check out this TED talk. And they were like, yeah, okay, whatever. And so then they read it. They was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You wrote it from that you in the TED talk. I was like, yeah. And then you said, hey, talk like TED. You need to listen to that. I was like, wait a minute, what is this thing? And so there is some kind of connection. But I felt the sense of euphoria when I wrote my rendition of my TED talk. Mm. One, because it's not, I don't know if I necessarily aspire to be on a TED talk, but as a speaker, as a coach, as a leader, I was like, well, if I am on a TED talk, what would I talk about? So you can't get to that level without putting yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so it could be things that my children bring up. If they bring up subject matters um, during our dinner that they are going through, I'll write about that. I won't necessarily write about what they're going through, but I will take that information and say, well, how did that impact me? And then I'd write about it. Um, my son is also someone else um, I take inspiration from. Um, I had my son when I was 17 years old. I was still in high school. Um, I still graduated on time, but um, before giving birth to him, I was in a dark place. Mm. Um, he gave me life. He gave me a reason and a purpose to still walk the earth. And so a lot of my inspiration and a lot of my drive of what I do is because of that relationship with him. And um, it makes me stronger every day to want to be that example to young ladies that are going through difficult times when they're growing up, feeling like they're not being heard or seen, um, maybe feeling like an outcast. And so when I write, I write to that young lady. I write to that woman who may feel like they are insignificant. I write to that man who doesn't know who he is and can't, doesn't identify with certain things, but then hears this, this word of inspiration and then he's like oh I can do that thing or that's how I was feeling and um, it's um, been an absolute enjoyment that no matter the age the um, the reader can read it digest the information that they need and then make it applicable to their lives so um, there's so many places um, that I pull my inspiration from. It could be um, me talking to one of the employees at work and hearing about something that happened in their personal life. And again, I don't say them specifically, but I will say, yeah, this is how it impacted me. And what do I need to do to change as a leader, right? Because sometimes we don't always identify with what someone's going through. When you have to get the numbers, when it's $3,000 if the plan is down uh, per hour, right? And you're like, but you need to get those cycles in. And they're like, but my wife just left me. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, we need to deal with that. <laughs> because at that point, you're not here. You're not focused. You're not invested in what you're doing. So let's, let's work through that part and then let's go to the next step. So um, it can, it's the trees that are outside. It's the squirrels that's running by. It's the deer that I almost hit on the way to work and just, you know, realizing that, oh, I could have took a life or it, or that deer could have took my life if I had hit it, you know? So it's even those things that I draw my inspiration from um, when I'm writing. That's amazing. I love it. Um, challenges, <laughs> right? Challenges. Cause <laughs> You're making it sound real easy. I mean, you, you, <laughs> it sounds smooth come out of your mouth. And I, I know you spoke <laughs> to the fact that you're wearing all these different hats. Um, what have been some of the challenges you've had along your entrepreneurship journey that you believe could, people could benefit from learning about? And, you know, you mentioned tools, which really caught my attention as well, right? Making a proper assessment in terms of what tools you're utilizing to solve problems. You know, you can't use right. a hammer to, uh, you know, can't use a hammer to, to turn a bolt, right? No. And, 
and the hammer only works if you swing it too. So you got to be willing to use a tool. Um, so talk a little bit about that, you know, yes. the challenges and what tools. So, so several of the challenges, um, I had this thing where I thought if I didn't have a certification, if I didn't have a license, if I didn't have a degree, that no one would take me serious as an entrepreneur. Mm. And um, so I am that person like, okay, how many hours do I need to study to get this license to do this thing so that I can have the credentials so that I could be deemed as trustworthy in this thing that I'm doing. And then I see other people that are just like out there doing it. They're just like, I just do the thing. I'm making money. I don't care. And I'm like, that's not the right way to do it. They're not going to understand you. You're, and then I'm like, okay, so stop being so rigid. Mm -hmm. You have to have some flexibility. But as I look at different businesses um, that I also coach through that process now, right? Because of my rigidity, I learned about the tools. I learned about the foundational things that need to be in place. And I can help augment that business owner, right? That way they can stay focused on the thing that brings them great joy. If doing bookkeeping does not bring them great joy and it causes them stress, that means that it will cause their create creativity to fail. So my challenge was getting over the fact that some of my talents, abilities, and gifts, there is not a license for it. Mm -hmm. Making something out of nothing, as my family says it, no one can certify me in that. Yeah. No one can say, okay, Jamie, this is how you look at this thing and create it. Now create it. <laughs> no. Um, I can walk into a store and I can see pieces of things and I go, oh, I can make that into this and then this can be this. And then, okay, that's awesome. Let's go do it. And I'll buy the stuff and I'll come home and they'll look at it and they're like, what is this bundle of stuff that you have? And I'm like, well, it's getting ready to be a blah, blah, blah. And they're like, really? And then I put together and they're like, how did you get that out of that? I was like, because I saw it before I saw it and I just needed the pieces to make it. So there are plenty of entrepreneurs that are out there that can see the thing, but they don't want to do the paperwork to create the thing. They don't want to do the accounting to manage the thing. They just want to do the thing. And that's perfectly okay. So part of my challenges were it's getting out of my head to be able to just create my thing and then go back and do the foundational pieces. That's okay. My challenge was do all the foundational pieces and then go do your thing, which then caused me frustration because I wasn't able to do the thing, <laughs> which brought me most joy. The other challenge is financing. Um, in order to create the things, you have to have financing or a really creative way to go find things to make the new thing. Um, and you can't just always go dumpster diving to create that thing. <laughs> if you're a baker, I would prefer that you don't go get a bag of sugar out of the trash to create my cake. <laughs> so, um, financing is another one of those challenges. So how do you make yourself marketable to investors or family and friends if you can't fully explain what this vision is that you have? Right. So then that stops you from moving into your entrepreneurship. That was one of my things. So part of my schooling helped me to learn how to provide the story, to provide the visual without having the tangible thing in my hand. This is what this thing is. And this is how important it is to me. What do you think? I buy it. OK, now I'll go and do this thing. Now this thing has come to fruition and people are like, that is not even the thing I thought that you were making. This is better than the thing that you described. And I was like, well, I didn't know really what that thing was gonna be. Um, so learning how to um, create the visual impact before the tangible is actually in hand. Um, used to be a challenge for me, but now I've overcome that. And then we mentioned tools. I call them tools in your tool bag. Um, so each creator and each entrepreneur um, has specific tools for their tool bag. Um, if I was a baker, then of course I want my rolling pin, I want my measuring cups, I need you know 
mixers, you know, that type of thing. Those are my tools in my tool bag. But if I'm writing a journal, a rolling pan and a mixer and a measuring cup is not going to help me be successful in writing my journal. So I have to have the proper tools in place to create that environment to make that journal. So whether it's an electronic, electronic device, if it's my pen and paper, um, if it's me speaking into um, a recorder to record that, which I also do if I'm driving and something comes to me, I will hit the record button and say some words. So sometimes it records it properly and then other times it's a bunch of gibberish and I go, okay, yeah, I don't know what that really was, but I had to learn what tools were available. So if I'm hands-free driving, that moment in time can be captured in a recording. So what are my tools in my tool bag for um, as an entrepreneur? So building my foundational pieces. So it may not be my tool bag, but if I have an accountant, do, does that accountant really have all the tools that they need in their tool bag to properly support me as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't even ask that accountant if they even have those tools. We just think because they're an accountant, they know what to do mm -hmm. and no they need to have the proper tools to manage your books, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so tools are so important. Um, learning your tools, understanding your craft helps you to build better tools for what you're doing. So um, if you're doing crafting, I mean, I just found this amazing tool that cuts styrofoam. It's a heat treatment. Yeah, oh. I was hand sawing styrofoam <laughs> because that was the tool I had. And then I did some research. I was like, there has to be an easier way so I don't have to sit here and cut, hand cut all of this styrofoam. And I found this amazing tool. And I was like, this just saved 10 minutes off of every craft that I need to create. Wow, new tool in my tool bag. But if I didn't see that I had an issue with cutting it by hand, then I wouldn't have went to seek out a new tool, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes we have to go seek out those new tools, even if it is a hammer. Well, what kind of hammer is it? Sometimes you have to go from um, a steel hammer to a rubber mallet, because if you use a steel hammer on an application that actually requires a rubber mallet, you will destroy the thing that you're absolutely trying to create. Mm -hmm. So knowing the tool's application is equally as important as knowing what the tool it is that you need to use. So um, I hope that answered <laughs> the questions. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Um, you said something that caught my attention. You notice okay. I like to do little, I like to do deep dive. <laughs> Number one, I saw it before I saw it. I just need the piece to make it. I'm going to give you credit for that for like a couple weeks. <laughs> and then after that, it's going to be my quote. So that's number one. <laughs> But <laughs> um, high emotional intelligence is what I'm picking up from you as well, right? Okay. And you usually don't find that in people who um, are quote unquote rigid, right? But you've developed it over time. And the fact that you even are able to acknowledge the fact that I'm rigid, but it's not necessarily a negative. I've turned, found a way to turn it into a positive and help people, right? Yes. Um, I found that entrepreneurs can oftentimes be loners and as a result are not necessarily the best communicators because of that, right? Um, they sometimes lack emotional um, yes. intelligence because of that. Mm -hmm. um, and you have overcome that. And I find that fascinating because like I said, your personality type from the standpoint of being a person to be rigid would tend, at least for me to believe that you wouldn't be a good communicator <laughs> and nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> um, there had to be some point where you came out your comfort zone. Like you went yes. from being not the best communicator to all of a sudden you can carry an interview by yourself. <laughs> <Very simple interruption>. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are people out there who have this issue. They have this conundrum. Mm -hmm. they, yes. they, they're they not comfortable talking and, 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 right. and speaking how they feel. How did you overcome that? What was your, what was your tool to do that? Okay, so I'm gonna say that it started way back when. So when I, I'm the youngest of five girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was younger, um, 
I would try to sing songs, but wouldn't know the lyrics. So I would sing part of the song and go hmm, 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 through the other parts until I would get back to the lyrics that I knew. And I went through a phase where people were like, would you stop singing? Would you mm-hmm. stop singing? And I did. I stopped singing. And I, cause I thought I was a bad singer, but it wasn't that I was a bad singer. It was just that they was kind of annoyed that I would break the song up <laughs> and not sing it all the way through. And for years that stopped me from wanting to sing publicly or speak publicly because I thought I, I was doing bad at that thing. And then um, I found that I don't take well to bullies no mm. matter what type of situation it is. And um, so I would speak up then, you know, I would, if it was a bully situation, I would, you know, voice on behalf of the person that was being bullied uh, because everyone knew that I was quiet and they're like, if she's speaking up, then it really has to be an issue. So people would listen. And then as I started endeavoring through life and learning different skills, I was always placed in a position where I had to train somebody else to do something. Mm. And I was like, so I am being required to talk when I don't want to talk. I just want to do my job. But because I do my job well, and I can explain how to do the job, I am being asked frequently to explain how to do this job. And I'm like, man, I don't really want to talk to people. I really just want to come in here, do my job, um, make my paycheck and go home. But that obviously was not my purpose. Uh Um, Then as I was um, studying and as I was being promoted to different roles, I was required to talk to vendors. So I was in building and facility maintenance. Well, you have to talk to people in order to get things done. I was in charge of IT. So all of the networking, all of the telephones, the security system, I had to interview four to five different companies to make sure that they met our needs. And in order to make sure that they met our needs, it couldn't just be in written form. I had to communicate to them clearly what we needed to have done. And so that is what then pushed me out of my, okay, I guess I can't just sit in the background and just be quiet. I got to talk. So how are we going to talk and how are we going to communicate so that they can understand clearly the directive in place and execute accordingly? Mm -hmm. So then I just developed, who are you, Jamie, as a speaker? And it's like, okay, but this is who I am from a corporate standpoint. I have all my facts, I have my details, I have my schedule in place, and these are my expectations, and you better execute towards that, or I will find someone else. And that was that level of communication. And then one year um, in 2016, um, I put on a women's conference because I felt that we needed to do um, women empowerment. Mm. I found some, um, some amazing speakers who weren't speakers at the time, They were just everyday women wanting to do extraordinary things. And they all came to me and said, yeah, we were thinking about doing a speaking engagement. And I was like, well, I'm an event planner. (laughs) Let me plan this event. So I plan this event and I go, I'll be the host only. I won't speak besides, you know, introducing you all and greeting the people. And that's my job. I'm going to be in the background. That's what I thought. Um, One of my speakers, um, at that time had to drop off. And I was like, we have a gap. Somebody has to speak. And the other ladies are like, we already spoke, we're done. We, you know, we, we, we're good. And I'm like, okay, let's roll with this. So um, had nothing prepared. Um, and I just said, okay, ladies, we're just gonna have this conversation. And so in that conversation, I talked about a um, little bit of body shaming, talked about being a teen mother, um, and the crowd went wild. Mm. It was not prepared. It was not rehearsed. It was just me having this conversation. And in that moment, I was like, who are you? You just did this thing. This is like kind of exciting, but scary. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, but I think I could do it again. <laughs> I think I could do it again. And so then I was like, okay, I started planning the next one in the moment, I'm like, okay, we have to have another one on this topic and we have to have another one on this topic. And then it just came together. And now when I talk to people, um, I am an introvert with extrovert qualities. 
<laughs> so I love people. I love to help people, but I need to have my private time. I, and I won't share everything with the world, but I will share what's necessary for somebody to be helped, to help uh, people to get to their next level. Um, so if it's a subject matter that I want to talk about, I am a chatty Cathy. You will not get me to stop. I will talk about it like crazy. If it's something that I don't want to talk about, then you will see the introvert side of me come out and I will sit there quiet and everyone goes, what is she thinking? Because she said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to get over that, I also knew that in order to be in leadership, mm -hmm. I don't like to say management because management to me is managing books and paperwork and mm -hmm. finances and leadership mm -hmm. is the art of coaching, training and building. So in order to be a great leader, you have to have an engaging personality. You have to be able to speak to people um, where they're at. And then you also have to be able to speak to them to get them to their next level. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to develop that in myself, not only for me, but for also for my young impressionable daughters and anybody who's in my circle because that's what makes a difference between this entrepreneurship level and the next. Um, I have aspirations of an enterprise, not a corporation. <laughs> um, so I know one day I'm gonna be on the cover of someone's magazine. I know I'm gonna have other um, interviews and things like that. So I may as well prepare now <laughs> for right. that vision that I saw what I saw before I had the tools to get where I wanted to be, so. I think one thing that is a reoccurring theme that's coming up with a lot of what you're talking about in this interview is all these, um, these moments that you weren't uh, necessarily prepared for that have just, that sprung themselves on you, whether it be the event, even getting pregnant at 17, the pandemic happening, right? And you realizing in those moments, it's you have to you have to make something happen right you have to pick yourself up make something happen and you can't just wallow in this right or you or let it uh, a failure define you or what whatnot right um and i i know for the past year so many especially entrepreneurs have struggled with this they they've hit this wall or this you know pandemic has happened and and we freeze and we don't know what to do right what comes to you and pushes you through those moments like obviously you you've handled them all very differently right depending on what the situation is but I would imagine there's something about you that helps you find the strength to start moving through those moments um what what do you find helps you get through those times so I want to make sure that I'm completely transparent so people don't think that uh nothing bothers me so I do have my pity parties. I do take a moment to cry. Um, and some, I used to be called a cry baby. So that was the other thing. I would cry at the drop of a hat. Um, and that probably helps with my creativity at times too. Uh, <laughs> but I do cry. I, I cry. I get frustrated. I yell at the top of my lungs. Um, at one of my conferences, I had every woman in the conference yell. I was like, we're going to yell. We're going to just let out this yell because it releases tension, right? Because we're told to be quiet. We're told to be reserved. We're told to, you know, stay in this box. We're going to yell. And so there are days that I will go outside and just yell to, to break the tension. Um, do I have hard days? Yeah, there are days when I wake up and I'm like, I'm not going in that place. Are you crazy? And then I go, oh, but the people need me. The people is what takes me to that place. Because um, if it was just the work, I wouldn't go. It's about the people for me. And what I find that in just about everything that I do, if there is a people component, the human aspect is what keeps me motivated. Um, even on my worst day. If I look at somebody else and I say, you know what, I'm complaining that I got to go to work. Well, where's that person that's next to me that does not have a job any longer? How can you sit there and complain about that when you have that opportunity? 
Um, when I look at, okay, so I'm gonna sell this thing and I only sold 10. Okay, well that other entrepreneur didn't sell anything today. How are you complaining that you only sold 10? Um, what did you, what could you do differently to sell more than 10? Well, I didn't do anything. I sat here and it organically, somebody just showed up and bought something and I didn't do anything. Okay, well, let's change that. So I do, I do cry. I do have those people that I can call and say, I'm having a really bad day. Um, what can we do? Or there are times when, which I love about my children, if they know it's a Saturday or Sunday where mom is just staying in the room and she's not interacting, they know she just need, I just need a day to decompress and just not be around anything because that's my introvert stage of, I just need to be alone. I need to purge everything in the outside world so that I can deal with everything that I have to deal with. Um, and when you're somebody who people look at that you always have it together, it's really hard to always have it together, right? Um, there have been moments that I've cried in front of my staff just so that they can see that I'm a human, that I do have emotions. And they're like, we made you cry. And I'm like, you didn't make me cry. The situation and the frustration around this made me cry. And I want you to understand that um, if I don't cry, that it's gonna turn into something else. I don't wanna be the monster because then if I don't shed tears, then I'm gonna be super angry with you and you don't deserve that either. So, okay, cry, got the tears out, keep it moving. Sometimes I have to throw humor at it. Um, yeah, okay, let's throw some humor at it and let's get over it. But um, I still have those days. I still have the struggles of, okay, um, I have another brand that I had a date so that rigidity came in. It was supposed to be released in July of 2020. It didn't happen. I did my research and development. I had everything prepared. I was all excited and it didn't happen. And for a moment, I thought I failed myself. You, you said you had this, you had to go date, you put everything in place. Why didn't you execute? And I beat myself up for a little bit. And then I said, eh, you know what? This other thing came out instead. So the purpose of the other thing wasn't for that time. Although I wrote it out, although I put a date on it, it was not purposeful for that moment. The other thing that came forth, which was the moment of reflections, was what the people needed. And I was like, okay, I can't be mad that that thing didn't happen. But now I'm ahead of the game because it's already there. Now it's just, when do you want to roll it out? So yeah, I have my struggles. I, you know, do I want to get up and brush my teeth? Mm. Maybe. <laughs> what are we doing today? <laughs> you know, are we going to stay in comfy clothes all day? Yeah. You know what? Let's just do that. And you have to give yourself those days, right? You have to give yourself those days of I'm allowed to have a pity party. You know, I don't put it on the calendar. Like in three weeks, I'm having a pity party. Um, <laughs> sometimes they show up sooner than later. Right? right. But it's how you deal with that pity party. Do you stay in it for so long that it disrupts everything else in your life? Or do you take that day, have the pity party, and then say, okay, we have goals and aspirations. Let's go get this thing. So that's, that's kind of how I deal with things. Perfect. Well, so, and wrapping up, right? And my goodness, you shared so many invalid. <laughs> I mean, you really did. I mean, like I said, I'm gonna let you have some of this for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you look online, you see quotes that sound similar to your verbiage. You know, that's where I got it from. <laughs> <laughs> but this was fantastic. I mean, it, it's been a long time since we've done an interview where it's like, I can't put, stop, I can't put my pen down. So, <laughs> I mean, really appreciate um, what you shared and what you poured out. Um, if you could kind of summarize, right, um, the lessons that you'd want individuals to take, like the top lesson that you want to impart to aspiring entrepreneurs or even those who are established who um, need to hear a differing perspective, right? 
Um, what would be the one lesson you'd want to impart to our listening audience for those who are going to hear this and say, okay, I can take this, this as actionable content. I can use this right now. I would say understand the value of partnerships. Hmm. Um, yes, you are an entrepreneur and yes, you have the vision for your business, but without a collective um, of partnerships, you won't have that success. No entrepreneur has obtained a level of success that they wanted by themselves. No matter how much someone will say, yeah, I did all of this. Yes, you do a, the, the majority of it, but the other 10% um, or 15%, you need to have partners. You need to have people that understand the parts of the business that you don't know, how to navigate those waters. Um, if you don't know how to speak about your brand, someone needs to be able to speak about your brand for you that you trust. Um, if you don't know what social media life looks like because you prefer not to delve into it, you need to have someone who has a social media background that you trust. Um, if you wanna to continue to be in the background, that's perfectly okay, but partner with those who can be in the forefront to make sure that your business is viable and that you have the, the money and the leverage that you need to be a successful entrepreneur. So partnership um, is the most important thing I would like to leave with people today. I love it. All right. I think I may have heard Rochelle. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing we always ask before we, uh, we ask all of our guests this, um, is something to think about, something to chew on a little bit. But if you were able to define and pick what your superpower would be, what would that be? And or um, what would your spirit animal be? Hmm. So my superpower is literally creating something out of nothing. And at first I, I hated that term until I recently realized that I actually do that <laughs> quite a bit. And it's with, um, it's with tangible things. And it's also with emotional connections with people. Mm. So I choose to find the nothingness in someone to help them to find why it's important and why they're important. Um, so when you think your purpose, you have no purpose, I look to find what your purpose is and help you to develop that. And um, I know that I had teachers growing up that did that for me and I didn't understand it then, but I totally understand it now, um, specifically with having children and having to be in a leadership role, that that is the most important thing you can do is to help somebody who think that there is a nothing there that is really something and helping them to develop that. So I believe that's my superpower. Perfect. All right, Jamie. So if anyone wanted to reach out to you, talk to you more, learn more about you, work with you, whatever, what would be the best way for them to get in contact with you? So the best way to get in contact with me would be uh, via email at woven, W-O-V-E-N, B as in boy, one seven at gmail.com. And Woven stands for Women of Virtue, Eliminating Negativity. I love it. I love it. Thank you again, Jamie. We appreciate you taking the time with us. This was an, an amazing interview. We hope to have you on again in the future. Um, and to our listening audience, please share this with anyone that you feel um, can benefit from this talk and, and what Jamie has to say and leave your comments below. We'll share them with her. And we will see you all soon.